It's good to be back at this place that means so much to my own spiritual development. Having worshiped here as a student and having preached here on a couple of occasions, I know you. You're all liberal, mainline, moderate, middle of the road, progressive, Protestant, gracious Christians. And so that means that when you, you first heard Jesus' story this morning, you thought you liked it. The master is throwing a great banquet. He spares nothing to honor his son. So he sends out his servants, come to my banquet, sending out his invitations to all of his friends and rich cronies, and they make excuses. He's miffed, but uh, he says, hey, I paid for the caterers, I've rented the hall. Hey, go out this time, and this time I want you to invite those who've never had an invitation. Uh, go out and invite the poor and the maimed and the, the people on the margins and the people who got nothing to do on a Saturday night. Invite them. And, and you like that because you like thinking that God is gracious and open-handed and God turns away from those at the center to those at the margins. And it's kind of fun to see God turn away from these self-righteous, stiff, shirt, priggish religious people and go out to the bad, go out to those in the highways and the byways who are not here this morning. <clears throat> but... <clears throat> Unfortunately, as so often is the case, Jesus won't, Jesus won't leave it at that. Uh, with the gracious God that all of us think we deserve. No, the thing that gets you about this story is the completely out of line, over the top judgment. Oh, those who are invited are too busy to come? This is not a good weekend? Well, torture them, burn them, kill them, send them to hell. That'll teach them to not RSVP. And if that didn't offend you, <clears throat> Jesus slams you again. One of these poor wretches that comes into the banquet gets into the worst kind of trouble because of his attire. The Lord of the banquet comes in and says, um, friend, yes, you there. H how did you get in here without a tux? Matthew says the guy's speechless. Of course he's speechless. One hour ago he was living down by the river in a trailer. He was living in a refrigerator packing crate Where's he going to get a tux? And the Lord of the banquet says, Well, <clears throat> I should be glad just to have you here, but torture him, kill him, burn him, send him to hell. That'll teach him to show up here without a cummerbund and patent leather pumps. I know that some of you have never seen this side of Jesus. Uh, Jesus begins Matthew's gospel with his Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the peacemakers. Do not return violence when violence is done to you. And then Jesus follows that with eight parables, including this one, in which God does violence to bad people. <sighs> now, now, what we want to worship, <clears throat> you were invited here to say, uh, now, we want you to participate in worship as you're called and as you're comfortable. Well, I'm a preacher. I want to invite you to worship as you're uncomfortable. Well, what we want is a God who says, oh, Saturday's bad for you. I know we're all just so busy. Let's make it a rain check. And then probably I'll throw another party in January when there's absolutely nothing to do and nowhere to go in New Haven. How about that? That's what we want. No, 
in the kingdom of God, everything gets jacked up. Everything gets elevated out beyond the bounds of moderation. Kill them, torture them, burn them, send them to hell. Why would this master, who at first seemed so generous, go completely ballistic over a turn down of an invitation or the inability to show up well dressed for the occasion? You know, it's one thing I like about <clears throat> you students, is because many of you have found a way to issue an invitation to someone without their knowing they got an invitation. Then, when they turn down the invitation, you don't know that you've been rejected. Uh, like, uh, hey, I, I, I ain't got anything to do this weekend. If you got nothing to do and nowhere to go, you want to go out? And then the person responds, I don't care. And then you can say, well, I mean, like, you know, since there's nothing to do and nobody to go out with and all, uh, you want to go out? Okay, I don't care. That's great. Because then you don't know you've been turned down when you get turned down. I still remember. Junior year of high school. I worked on it for two months to invite well-developed Bev Beckwith to the junior senior. <laughs> and <clears throat> when I finally got up the nerve to invite her I, I, to the junior senior, she said, um, you know, <clears throat> nothing would please me more than to go to that dance with you like I've been living my whole 16 years, just waiting for an invitation from somebody like you. Unfortunately, I have a beloved aunt that I think will die that weekend. I can't go. <laughs> and I still feel bad about that. Uh, but yeah, this, this is beyond feeling bad. I mean, this is over the top. The completely inappropriate reaction of the master of the banquet. Still, decades ago when I was in college, back then <clears throat> they didn't, we didn't have phones. There was only one phone in the whole college. It was down the hall in the dormitory. So if you wanted to like get in touch with the real world, you had to go down the hall and stand in line at that payphone and call out. But the good thing was my room was down there near the payphone, so I could listen in to just about every conversation. And I remember one night I was trying to study and I heard this guy on the phone, yes ma'am. Well, well yeah, but mom, I, look, I, I don't know what happened in history. I, I got in there, the exam, I asked all these questions, weren't even in class, and I, 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 well, I mean, chemistry. Now, chemistry, I could tell that guy didn't like me the moment I walked in that class. He's had it in for me ever since the beginning of the semester. And I, 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 I know that. Y yes, ma'am. Oh, 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 okay. I, I, I'm going to do better this semester. I'm going to do better. You know? Well, I heard him slam down the phone. He staggered away. He got as far as my room. He plopped down there in my room. Said, Give me a cigarette. And uh, we sat there. And I said, you know, parents. <laughs> what are you going to do with them? You try to explain these, they just can't understand. And he said, yeah, she, she can't understand. Because I'm the first person in my family ever to go to college. And my mom was working two jobs just so I can be here. She called me from the lawyer's office where she cleans up at night. So I guess she thinks she's maybe put more into my education than I am right now. I, I can understand her being so mad. Uh, you'd like for Jesus not to ratchet everything up. We would like for these matters to be 
matters of calm and cool deliberation. After all, that's what we do at the university. No matter what's on the table, we always step back and we have a discussion and we have a frank sharing of different points of view and then the bell rings and then we leave. Um, but maybe life, your life, consists of a bunch of invitations. And you get as old as I am and you look back on your life and life is a bunch of doors that were opened and you went through and doors that you shut. And maybe they're always consequences. I know as a parent, one of the hardest things about being a parent is the, the main thing you'd like to protect your children from is consequences. You just wish their young, uninformed decisions didn't count as much as they often count. And when it's God's invitation, wow, I guess stuff gets really elevated. Uh, God's invitations are a serious matter. Uh, of course, we would have accepted if we had known how <clears throat> ridiculously <clears throat> ballistic and out of control the, the master got. But that's one of the touchy things about invitations. You, you don't always know <clears throat> that this is something of life and death significance. Uh, <clears throat> I remember I, I was a student. <clears throat> I knew his parents. He got in touch with me. More than anything else, he wanted to get in Duke University. But he said, I fooled around a lot during high school and I'm going to have a tough time getting in. So against my advice, he goes and camps out, literally, at the admissions office of the university. <clears throat> and he says he's going to hound them until they let him in. Well, they, the director of admissions, realizing he was dealing with an emotionally unbalanced person, let him in. And <clears throat> so he called me and he said, guess what? I just got in Duke. And I said, wow, I bet you're happy. And he said, well, sort of. I mean, you know, now it's the responsibility that's getting me. I've never had this much responsibility laid on my shoulders. I just hope I can take it. God's invitations, I mean, maybe, see, you think you're here this morning because you decided to be here. But maybe you were invited. And from one other thing I've found, you know, you've got to be careful. Every time you pray, every time you sing a hymn, every time you show up a place like this, every time you're just minding your own business, a living God just loves to make you God's business. And you, you get these invitations. Uh, as was mentioned, we, <clears throat> Alabama has got the meanest immigration law in the nation now. And right after the law was promulgated, we had a silent vigil in Birmingham. And we had prayer. And, and I prayed, Lord, we didn't know what we were doing when we elected a dermatologist as our governor. We, 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 were, we didn't know. He knew this little about government. We, forgive us. Um, after the dem demonstration, I, I passed by an old Methodist preacher standing there with tears streaming down his eyes. And I said, brother, you're right to be weeping. This is a sad day for our state. And he said, no, these are not tears of sadness. These are tears of joy. And I said, really? He said, in 1964, God invited me to be part of God's kingdom in a little town in Alabama. 
and I didn't have the guts to go with God. I can't believe before I die, God's given me one more chance. I'm here. Well, when I was a student here my last year, <clears throat> I applied to graduate school at Emory University, and they invited me down there for interviews. And I flew down to Atlanta, checked into my hotel, got to the hotel room. No sooner was I checked in, there was this banging at the door. And I opened the door, and there was this guy standing there, and he says, Hey, buddy, uh, hey, you're staying on the best uh, floor in the hotel because tonight we're going to have a party to end all parties, and you're invited. Come on to the party. And I said, you know, uh, thank you, uh, but uh, I'm down here for a very important interview. And I said, yeah, but I mean, hey, you still got to live. Come on down to the party. I said, well, thank you, thank you. Bam. So... Sure enough, by 9 o'clock, I could hear music down the hall. I could hear loud voices. About 10 o'clock, I heard glass breaking. Loud voices. 10, 15, somebody bammed on the door and says, Hey, hey, come on, come on now. You wouldn't believe it. We got a bunch of girls there from Agnes Scott. Come on down. And I said, I, Really, I'm sorry. I have got to have some sleep. Please shut the door. Keep the noise down. Well, I had a fitful night, but I got up the next morning and I opened my door and sure enough, the hallway was just strewn with bottles and glass. And uh, so I was walking down the hall, the door opened and there was this guy. And he said, <laughs> man, you missed a party last night. And then a voice in the room said, Georgie, come on back. And he said, I, I gotta go, he shut the door. Now here's my point for you young people. I'm 65 years old. I got into Emory. I did very well in my graduate work. But to this day, I wish I had gone to that party. <laughs>